Okay, here we go. Focus. Car narration. Okay, I get that he's a race car, but he lives in a world where the cars are living things. So why would race cars ever spend time in a dark trailer waiting for some big reveal like a human world race car? Are these... Are these cars taking pictures? How the f*** does that work? Are the helicopters anthropomorphic, or are there cars inside the helicopters flying them? And if these helicopters are on their own, why isn't there a whole world full of them having helicopter races? Also, I see Dynaco still exists in the living race car world, even though this is a completely different world than the one in Toy Story. If there were a car outperforming the others like this, especially at the end of the race, then the race wouldn't ever be in question. In other words, bull****. And this race, this is no different than a 10,000 meter foot race, right? Why would an event such as running be such a big sport in this world? Also, if every part of these cars are actual living appendages and need to be changed periodically, like the tires, it really starts to make you ponder the question, if I replace all the parts of an old car, is it the same old car or is it a new car? Separate men and women's bathrooms open up the question as to what makes a car male or female and how car sex works. Also, shouldn't this sexist joke about this long line of women cars be the other way around? Or am I being sexist thinking it should be another way? Ah, f it. Also, ha, huh, because even female cars take so much longer in the bathroom than men, am I right? Ha 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 ha. Wait, what are these cars even going to the bathroom for? Oil changes? Top offs? This long line makes no sense. Tony Stewart. I'm Bob Cutlass, here with my good friend, Daryl Cartrip. Get it? It's just like the Flintstones for cars. This race also brings into question why there are nothing but male cars driving in it. Are male cars inherently faster than female cars? What kind of bull is that? F***ing 10 yards, unsportsmanlike conduct. There's no way the rookie can make it through. Not in one piece, that is. Daryl, <clears throat> car trip would be excellent at cinema sins. <laughs> this maneuver is total bull but if this really is a race like Daytona or something like that, this mega wreck would cause a delay or a stoppage that would freeze the action until it got sorted out. He's not pitting! Wait, you're saying everyone pitted at the 215 mile mark except McQueen? And he's still somehow in the lead 80 laps later without pitting? And his car hasn't broken down? Cars should not have tongues, but whatever. Even if they did, the tongue extension should not count in this automobile race. It's taking them a really long time to figure out who won this thing. We're like your biggest fans! Good job! That's a headlight joke right there. Piston Cup officials have determined that a tiebreaker race between the three leaders will be held in California in one week. Hope you didn't have plants. Also, why not just f***ing race right now? And why is that f gotta take place in California? This race shot off fireworks after announcing a three-way tie. I bet the fans were like, f*** you race, I'm stuck in traffic after paying big money to see an inconclusive sporting event. Don't drive like my brother! Oh yeah, don't drive like my brother! This click and clack cameo is now sad since one of them died. Nice going, Pixar. Thanks, Obama. Instead of a moon roof allowing him to see the stars, this truck has a digital ceiling, allowing him to see the stars, while also wasting a lot more energy. Sweet! Somehow a truck this interesting to the press will still go missing, like, moments after this. I get what you're going for here, with the hustle and bustle of life, but is there any highway in the US with this much f***ery of exits and entrance ramps going on? By the way, this car getting a ride from a truck doesn't endear me much to Lightning McQueen, but I'm already having trouble figuring out why I should root for this guy since he's been nothing but an asshole since the movie started. The Fast and the Carious! <sighs> this rough and tough car street gang's main motivation is to make tired vehicles sleep? Well, in order for this movie to happen, it needs the truck to fall asleep, the asshat neon cars to push the truck into the rumble strips, and the rumble strips to cause a bobblehead to fall and open the back door. Also, a high-tech race car transporting big rig would definitely have a failsafe in place to keep lightning from just drifting out the back of the truck while sleeping. Also, the tailgate dropping to the pavement and creating sparks still doesn't wake up this semi. Mac! Aren't nearly all these trucks named Mac? Because if they aren't, that's some bullshit, and I don't like it. After driving along thinking every semi he sees is Mac, Lightning makes the crazy decision to pinpoint Mac's identity to this one exiting semi, because story. I mean, think about it, Lightning. Why would Mac be getting off the highway to California at a lonely exit offering no truck stops or gasoline or anything? The entire movie hinges on this terrible split-second decision made by Lightning. Magic Train appears so that this movie has an exciting beat-the-train scene that is only in this movie and no movies before. In this world, you can get a ticket for running too fast. Electrical and phone wires are not made out of bungee, and neither are the wooden poles they're attached to. So, remember the movie Doc Hollywood? Michael J. Fox played a doctor who had a big interview with a plastic surgery office and he had car trouble and got stuck in a small town and saw Julie Warner's boobs? This movie is Doc Hollywood dressed up as an animated race car flick and no boobies. Unless you count that headlight scene, which I don't. I'm for a good pun, just like anybody, but breaking news? As in news that's so important you break for it? How do we reconcile that This movie has zero respect for the actual mobility impact of parking boots. You're all aware of our town's proud history. Here she goes again. Again? Do you have regular court sessions in this tiny-ass podunk town? Enough that she's given this speech before? I don't think so, is what I'm saying. Luigi, <sighs> what do you have at your store? Tires. Jesus, she didn't even call him to the stand or anything. This is more like a church revival meeting than a real court. The only guy strong enough to fix that road is Big Al. Oh, he can do it. He's got the horsepower. Yeah, but not the actual towing capacity. 
If you think a race car is going to lug some giant tar rig, then you guys are living in a cartoon. Oh man, you get to work with Bessie, I'd give my left two lug nuts, something like that. The whole movie is filled with shit like this. Also, in 2006, this was right around the time you thought, man, Pixar has a perfect record. They may lose that perfect record. Why, cars? Why? After an attempted getaway, Lightning runs out of gas at the exact spot the cop and district attorney are inexplicably waiting to taunt him. Jesus, how long is this fire truck going to water those flowers? And did I just say that? They just dart around this massive road damage as though it's a puddle, paying it no attention whatsoever, thereby kind of proving Lightning's point about how little the pavement damage really matters. Radiator Springs is filled with the most desperate salesman created this side of Glengarry Glen Ross. I also think I now understand how this town went extinct. Extremely old joke about Butte that was used in Toy Story 2 rears its ugly Butte in the ass end of another Pixar movie. Movie wastes time with a Lightning McQueen nightmare where Chick Hicks gets the Dinoco sponsorship. Something we don't give a about right now because Lightning has been nothing but a big asshole this whole movie. We like Chick better than this dude, so it seems like a good fantasy to us. I'm actually wondering right now why Bessie isn't a self-contained living vehicle. Everything else, like this, is a living thing. Why isn't this? Then why don't we just have a little race, me and you? This guy is super flexible on applying the law after spending the first half of the movie being super stringent about it. Wait, are those tire tracks in the sky? They have flying vehicles that make normal smoke, right? The f Uno lapo! That shit is racist. By the way, nearly an hour in, and this guy is still a terrible person. You got your tow cable. Oh yeah, I always got my tow cable. And why wouldn't he? It's attached to him. Mama ain't seen you that low in years. I haven't seen a road like this in years. Do these cars really never go anywhere? I mean, what's the point of being a car? Huh. That punk actually did a good job. And it makes up for all the bad stuff he's done so far. If you're going hard enough left, you'll find yourself turning right. Is he talking about race cars or sexual fluidity or city planning? There is no part of this machine stretching out over this far right foot and a half of road, and yet it's being newly repaved by magic. Porsche tramp stamp. With this tar machine still running while Lightning sits and talks to everyone, shouldn't there be a pile of unused tar on the road? Or is he actually making a speed bump? Car sworn enemy. Tractor tipping's fun. Oh, come on. What kind of bullshit am I watching right now? How does this feel, let alone this entire empty ass town, require this many goddamn tractors? Yes, this is rough terrain, but Frank should still not be able to keep up with or catch up to a fucking race car. He's a combine or a thresher or something for fuck's sake. Also, from this point forward, the much slower mater will somehow keep up with lightning during this chase. Frank could easily decimate that fence and keep chasing them. Except for the invisible dog fence I'm assuming is in place here, for some reason. You're in love with Miss Sally. Wait, did something happen in this movie that would make a love story possible? Have they spoken more than 50 words to each other? It's actually insane I'm watching a Pixar movie right now. It's got so much filler in it. When it came to making this movie, I guess they just threw out that story first philosophy. I know I made a good choice. In what? My best friend. Movie makes an attempt at a half-assed emotional connection an hour into the movie. Also, this says a lot more about what a hole Radiator Springs is than any other attempt by the movie to convince me this place is a sh Hey, stickers! Ah! How did lightning turn all the way around in this thing? Wait a minute, are all the countries the same in this car world? I mean, the exact same American flag? Was there a revolutionary war where George Carr Washington crossed the Delaware? A midnight ride by Paul Raving? A traitor by the name of Benedict Arnoil? I like Sally as much as the next car, but cone-shaped clock, cone-shaped lamps, cone-shaped artwork, wallpaper, baseboards, flower pot, picture frame, and that's beyond the huts themselves. I think it's safe to say Sally took the cone theme way too many steps too far. Like, she might be a serial killer. For reals. This asshole dreams this for the third time, and with a third different car winning all the shit he wants to win. And amazingly, despite the total nothing of the plot, Cars is quite long for a Pixar movie. Lightning kicks this can, which causes a noise, which leads him to investigating and finding out Doc's racing past, which makes that the most plot convenient can that ever existed in a movie. Trespassing. He has a piston cup? Three piston cups? No, four piston cups! Ah, 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 ah. Also, could you possibly land in a less likely place to find a past Piston Cup winner and your future wife in a town that has 10 total cars in it? I mean, have you ever seen him race? <laughs> he won three Piston Cups. He did what in his cup? Come on, let's take a drive. Tractor tipping last night, lazy afternoon drive today. It's almost like Lightning wants to follow the script more than he actually wants to get out of this town. Every single daylight hour should be spent paving that f***ing road. But no, he's just blowing it off every chance he gets. Falling in love while racing along deserted, dangerous roads? This is a Bond movie without the humans. Okay, so Radiator Springs, the town, is here. The racetrack around Willie's Butte is here. But the farmlands with a dozen tractors and Frank? Nowhere to be seen. Back then, cars came across the country a whole different way. Is Jesse about to sing When She Loved Me? Because I can totally come back in three minutes or so if that's gonna happen. Also, a movie takes time to give a road history lesson. Long ago... But not so very long ago. 
James Taylor singing wistfully about the past? It literally doesn't matter what else is going on in the movie at this point. I'm duty bound to remove one sin. What happened? She just told you the fucking interstate got built and redirected traffic. Jesus. And then the movie gets way heavy handed about its small town businesses killed by the rush of American commerce. It kind of loses me completely. How great would it have been to see this place in its heyday? It would have been the same town, only with more traffic. It's kind of nice to slow down every once in a while. Sure, but you have a race to win. And judging by the sunset, you just wasted a whole day not doing the thing you knew to do in order to make it to that race. This tractor tipping thing gets even more screen time in this zero plot movie. They spend so much time on showing this turn in the movie, there must be one exactly like it at the Piston Cup track. Luckily for Lightning, he's got someone who can show him how to do it. Something tells me this would have been no issue at all if Lightning had made it to California as planned, but because he's stuck here, learning this turn suddenly became the most important thing ever. Even though his real problem so far was that he didn't change his tires and he was a dick to his crew. When I finally got put together, I went back expecting a big welcome. You know what they said? Your history. I have never known a time in sports history when an athlete was still in his prime and got completely ignored just because that person suffered a season-ending injury. You probably still have an owner who would pay for Babe Ruth to be on their team if they could afford the exhuming costs. This is the second time I've seen this fire truck knock over this stack of tires. And I have to wonder, why does somebody bother to continue stacking them back up every time? Uh -huh. What did Luigi tell you, eh? Wow, you were right. Better than a Ferrari, huh? The message of the next montage is that if you buy a whole bunch of stuff, you are suddenly a good person. This looks like you've helped everybody in town. With one sale each, they should be able to stay in business for 30 more years. Or maybe the interstate will suddenly disappear. When did everybody in town have time to fix all this up without Sally seeing it? And how long did it take? Longer than Lightning has to get to the big race, but damned if they did it anyway. Everybody is a dick to Lightning's hard work that took him five weeks. Holy sh he missed the race. It's over. While the world's been trying to find you, Dynaco has had no one to woo. Lightning's been gone for nearly a week, and the damage is done, and he already knew Dynaco was wooing Chick, but is suddenly motivated to get that stupid sponsorship again because his agent tells him this stuff he already knows. Get out of radiation stinks now, or Dynaco is history. Seriously. Did this Pixar movie really need Jeremy Piven doing his entourage agent shtick? They really made this movie from spare parts, didn't they? Pun intended. F it. This rush of paparazzi after Sally leaves makes me wonder how or why Lightning and Sally were ever allowed that private moment a second ago in the first place. Hey, are you Doc Hudson? Yeah. Thanks for the call. Random media cars seek out the car that tipped them off so that the audience knows who to blame for this plot development. In fact, the country is almost shut down. This country would never shut down or even almost shut down for a fucking NASCAR race. Here's an entire shopping mall that closed for the race because they want to fail. I mean, Shopping malls are losing money hand over fist, so shutting down a whole Sunday seems self-destructive. I am temporarily distracted enough to notice that in this arena, you can't possibly have two-way traffic going to and from seats. This has got to be the most annoying place to watch sporting events ever. Flashback Fantasy does not contain a two and a half mile lap dance. I don't think I... I didn't come all this way to see you quit. Doc? Happy movie moment aside, how does the last minute unknown pit crew manage to sneak their way into the infield without credentials? Before appearing suddenly at this Piston Cup race, Doc took the time to have his old race name painted on his sides to help the kids in the viewing audience understand the importance of self-promotion and braggadocio, and to waste time. Why didn't Sally make the trip to the race since nearly everybody else did? What? Whoa! Get it out! I'm shaking my head. I want you to know my disappointment in this line goes beyond the verbal into the physical. This is truly a contractual sin against America, and I'm giving it three sins at once. Lightning catches up to the field pretty easily after being a lap down, and despite that amazing burst of speed, will not zoom past these cars and win easily and will make this dramatic somehow. So remember all that time the movie spent with that turn? Finally gets its moment to shine here. But one question, how is Lightning an expert at it after failing a million times and seeing Doc do it once? Also, I'm glad McQueen finally learns and understands the go hard enough left you'll find yourself going right lesson. Truly I am, but isn't he cheating his ass off by utterly shortcutting this track by running through the grass? Lightning grows a conscience at the stupidest time. A moment that should show me how much he's grown actually makes me physically angry. I think the king should finish his last race. Something you could have helped with after winning, but whatever. Good moral lesson, yo. Fun image, but in a world without humans, where cars are entities all to themselves, why would the infield be filled with only RVs? The RVs are individuals, right? Camping is a word that should mean basically nothing to the citizens of this universe, right? But I didn't win. Lightning, there's a whole lot more to racing than just winning. Name one thing. I'm happy in a tornado in a trailer park! That's racist. Hey, I'm back! Wanna see my car penis? What now happens to Radiator Springs is someone builds a Walmart, followed by a McDonald's, and the charming small town turns into every other place in the US. It took six writers, including a writing team, to write this movie. Yeah, this movie. Drop and give me 20 miles! Which for a car is normal amounts of driving that has very little to do with any kind of punishment whatsoever. You are a toy car! Disney gives itself ideas for future cash grab remakes whenever this Marvel thing inevitably crashes and burns. 
Wait a minute here. They're just using the same actor over and over. What kind of a cut-rate production is this? Mac is right about the cut-rate production, but for the wrong reasons. Jacob aboard the Gnosis. Please, watch over him. I'll try. Mac! Hey, Mac! Mac! Candy cane. They brought your kids to your divorce? Sympathy. Well, it's working. I feel sorry for them already. Okay. Left! Yes! Thank you! Or should I say no thank you? Thank you for playing, should we? Or should we not? Follow the advice of the galactically stupid! Because Emily was just the same. She was my whole world. When somebody loved me. He's catching some blow up! Inga Boonga! 